Welcome to the Way to Go podcast. I've got my buddy Mark here with me today, worship pastor at Eagleville Bible Church. Good to be here, man. Thanks yeah. for the invite. I love coming out and just helping you out with these shows, and hopefully they are providing help for uh, people, you know? Well, you do help me out with the show, actually, because yeah. you you have a lot of scriptures written down, and I know when I write my show and I'm outlining the show for doing this podcast, I know you're already on it, man. Mm-hmm. I know you're already, because we've already discussed it. Yesterday, as we took a trip together to get something for the church, then, you know, we were already discussing what we wanted to talk about right. today. So, right. but it's, it's like I said, uh, before we even started, I think it's really, this topic about listening is really challenging to me because I think that it, listening is a skill, but it's a, it's a hard issue too, because if we're selfish, we're more interested in, I want to tell you my story, but do I want to listen to your story? Exactly as, am right. I, am I as interested in your story as I am in telling you? what I saw, even though I already know what I saw. So what do you care? You know what I'm saying? Like, well, I already saw it. So me telling it doesn't really gain me anything, but me hearing a story maybe I didn't see would be a positive, right? Oh yeah, definitely. I mean, you, uh, you know, you go throughout your whole day hearing all kinds of stuff all right. day long. You're hearing things all the time, but certain things you listen to, right? You know, you ever hear that thing going, shh, shh, shh. Yeah. Listen. Right. You know, you're really trying to pay attention, you know, and in, in the context of talking with each other, listening is where you you're trying to gain understanding. Right. You're trying to hear actively, you know, you're you're hearing somebody out actively to gain understanding is how I look at listening anyways. You well, know? One, one of the great things I just saw, saw this meme, I thought it was hilarious. It's like, I really don't want you don't really want to hear my opinion. Mm-hmm. You just want to hear your opinion come out of my mouth. <laughs> That's what you want. It's not about understanding what I think. You just want me to think what you think. Isn't that the truth? Man. Oh, it is the I truth. Mean, it's, Absolutely. It is. Uh, unfortunately, in today's culture especially, that seems to be how it's viewed. You know? I, I'm not... For one thing, I th- I saw one uh, man, and he said that we some of the stuff that people are so uptight about, we used to joke and laugh about at one time. Yeah. I don't remember the society being so combative. Maybe it was, and I just forgot. But it seems like people are truly combative. They're not really listening to each other. They're just, no, this is it. No, this is it. And they they all have a mind meld to the great know-all. Right. And, and they don't ever conceive of the fact that, they, you can't all be right at the same time. That's right. Because, right. but everyone thinks they're right, and it drives me crazy. But anyway, so I've been kind of learning that, you know what, just don't, maybe you just don't need to say anything. You just need to listen. And that's where I've been challenged with James one nineteen. My dear brothers and sisters, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to become angry, maybe twice as quick to listen as you are to talk slow to speak slow like when you think of slow come to a speed bump and you slow down or you come up the railroad tracks and you don't just like fly over them. you're slowing down so right. when it comes to your your speaking i want to slow myself down yeah yeah because inevitably if you don't you're going to walk yourself right into a trap right well you yeah. need to slow down you need to slow down and actually think through the stuff i love uh Proverbs 18, 2, it says, a fool takes no pleasure in understanding, but only in expressing his own opinion. And that's Proverbs 18, 2? Yeah. I mean. That's awesome. Yeah. That's, I love that verse. Come on. You know, we should be trying to gain understanding with each right. other. And that requires us listening. That requires us taking time and paying right. attention to each other. Because, man, a lot of times, I'm not saying all the time, but a lot of times, the arguments against us are to trap us and they're to try and get us into a spot where we can't argue anymore. Right. We need to shut up. You know what I right. mean? We don't want to be silenced. We want to silence ourselves to gain understanding and come right. back with a wise word. Yeah. And I know? think this is about, you know, too, not just about avoiding because someone is trying to entrap you or, you know, there's some type of thought that maybe someone's out to get me. But I think just the fact that I need to listen more. And I think that when I, as I've been reading a lot about the race, racial tensions, Mm -hmm. race riots. I'm talking, uh, I hear about politics. I'm talking, uh, their stories I'm talking. And I think about how many times I'm talking and I can't, when you're in disagreement with somebody or somebody feels passionately in the opposite way in which you do, I can't honestly think of times where I've gained ground giving my opinion that I've actually endeared that person to me. 
I find that people are more endeared to me when I say, hey, listen, and we're having a dialogue back and forth. And I, and I tell them, even the other day, I told someone, listen, I'm going to, I am going to read the article you sent me. I am going to read the book you suggested for me. Then we'll talk about it because I don't, I can't just be about, I think, I think, I think, well, let me, let me see what you think. Let me read it and let me not judge that. Let me just hear what you have to say. And I think that's where we're at right now because people, you might as well just listen because you're going to get nowhere talking at time. No, not every time. Obviously, if you got a kid going the wrong way, parents don't shut up then. Yo, you got a, you got a kid going the wrong way. That's the time you want to be talking. Yeah. Listen to them, but talk, you know, and you can't stop giving directions and guidance, but in other things that are just, it's all this debatable stuff and political stuff and not Jesus stuff. And I I don't know how much time I really want to give to it. Well, it means, I want to listen. It means a lot to us to know that we're heard. Right. From our perspective and from the other person's perspective, you know, right. Um, I, you know, marriage, uh, exercise, communication, exercise in marriage. You give each other a pillow or anything, and you say, all right, your turn to talk. I'm going to listen. And that person talks. You hand them the pillow when you're done, and, you know, the other person listens while the other person talks. Right. And then you say, so what I hear you saying is, you know, and there's exercises in active listening and active responses that you can do in marriage. We're not just talking about political things here. Every part of life requires well, listening, requires engagement. We could do it this way. I mean, we're doing the podcast. I can drink from my coffee. When I'm done talking, I give it to you. Give it you to drink. me. I'll, yeah, COVID. You drink while I talk. Are we still right. doing well, COVID? Same, yeah. Are we still doing I don't know yeah. if we're still doing COVID, actually. Right, right. I, I, the, the one, the best thing about all the tension that we've had recently is I haven't heard as much about COVID. And actually, right. the numbers in Ohio, even opening up, are going down. So Crazy what does that tell you? Yeah. Uh, here, here are some... 10 steps to effective listening. Uh, step number one, face the speaker and maintain eye contact. Uh, one of the one of the worst things, you know, if, if you're a wife and you talk to your husband and you always say he's not listening, it may not be that he's not listening. He may not have even known you were talking. I mean, my wife's come and talked to me before. I have no eye contact with her. I have no idea she's talking to me. She's standing on the side. My mind is, woo, gone. And whatever article right. I'm reading or editing a photo or listing something on eBay, and I'm not even there. Like, I didn't even know that there was anything else going on but that. And then she says, you don't even listen to me. Yep. No, I never heard you yep. maintaining eye contact. Make sure there's eye contact. How oh. many times, Bill, how many times with your kids have you gotten down and said, look at me? You know what I mean? Like, look at me when I'm talking to you. I don't remember because it was so many years ago, to be <laughs> honest with you. But there are little kids. Right. I'll get down. Oh, yeah. If I feel like they're intimidated by me, I'll get down on their level. Mm-hmm. But anyway, uh, step number two, be attentive, but relax. So I guess you don't want to come across as uptight uh, when you're listening. Like, <laughs> Yeah, go ahead. Tell me something more. Yeah, I mean, you're looking all cross. <laughs> They're probably not a great. Keep an open mind. I think it's good. Mm-hmm. Um, not that, listen, being an open mind doesn't mean you believe everything. It's just you're trying to understand a different perspective or you're understand, trying to understand where they came from. If you're mm-hmm. totally closed off before someone starts to talk, you're probably not going to be a great listener. Mm-hmm. Uh, step number four, uh, listen to the words and try to picture what the speaker is saying. Uh, that's one thing. And then here, here's another one. Uh, we can actually uh, not only do that, don't interrupt and impose your own solutions. That's a good one because man, it you is. know, people, guys are fixers. So if our wives come to us and they, they tell us a problem, we all, we automatically want to give solutions. Well, you should do this. You should do this. And even as a man, I hate it when, if I would share something in the past about something that was bothering me, uh, it could be in the office, church, whatever. Well, you should do this and you should do this. Like, I'm not telling you this so you can tell me how to do my right. job. I Proverbs, just want you, I just wanted to tell you so you've listened. Proverbs right? eighteen thirteen says, If one gives an answer before he hears it completely, it is folly and shame to him. Right. You know? There Don't you give go. an answer before you completely hear the person out, you know? Right. Because if you interrupt, then you're saying this, I'm more important than you. What I have to say is more interesting. I don't really care what you think. I don't have time for your opinion. This isn't a conversation. It's a contest, and I'm going to win. And to be honest with you, do I think I interrupt people? Yeah, there are times I do. So that, that's a good one for me right there. You know, mm-hmm. I admit that. Uh, wait for the speaker to pause and ask clarifying questions. Uh, that's something you can do. Um, ask questions to ensure understanding. So don't, in other words, what they were saying here is don't ask a question that's off topic. In other words, they told you something in your squirrel brain, which my, I have a squirrel brain, and mm-hmm. it jumps from branch to branch to branch. So all of a sudden, I just jumped to another branch and asked a question that was not exactly what they were talking about. It was just, you know, about, you know, mm-hmm. they could have said, yeah, and this car went by. and Oh, yeah, speaking of that car, but, you know, and I'm now I'm not talking about that, and I'm a right. million miles away. So ask questions right. to ensure understanding. Uh, try to feel what the speaker's feeling. Again, that could be helpful. I'll give the speaker regular feedback so they know 
you know, that you're actually, oh, wow, that's, that's hard, or you must be thrilled, or that's terrible. You know, I can see why that would be difficult to go through, that kind of stuff. Uh, and pay attention to what isn't said. I mean, nonverbal clues. Mm-hmm. Oh, man. Can be Most of our communication is actually body language, you know. Right. Uh, a little of it is what actually comes out of your mouth. It's right. what, what we're saying to each other while we're sitting there uh, talking to each other. I'll go back to what you said, feel what the speaker's feeling, you know. When you're listening and actively listening, engaged, trying to find understanding, it's very important for us to be empathetic towards the person, you know. We have to have that empathy right. in our hearts, compassion in our hearts. Doesn't mean that we have to agree with what they're saying. Right. But we have to understand that this person has feelings and they're trying to express a feeling. So try to put yourself in a position where you are gaining understanding of their situation through their feelings. Right. You know. So maybe telling my family for years and everything they told me, my my standard answer was always, you need to work out more. It didn't matter what it was. I have a cold, <laughs> you need to work out more. I don't feel good. You need to work out more. <laughs> yeah. My ankle yeah. hurts. You need to work out Probably more. Probably not too helpful. It didn't matter. Right? It didn't matter what they say. Oh, if you mentioned to my family, mm-hmm. if you mentioned Bill in the same sense as compassion, they'll think it's a comedy show. So, because it's not like, it's, wow. ju- no, I am like, if I hear a story, I get very sad for mm-hmm. sad news. It bothers me when I hear things. So yeah, that kind of compassion, but yeah, I'm, I'm definitely, Hey, let's get going. Come on, come on, come yeah, on, come on. Right. So I have to work on that. And I'm not saying that's right. I'm just saying I acknowledge that's something I, I could do better at to really feel like if your wife's telling you how sick she feels, maybe try to feel like what that would feel like. Yeah. Well, my stomach's right. really bothering me. Okay. What would it, man, what would I feel like if my stomach was mm-hmm. bothering me? My wife just had a fever for 19 days. Right. And my right. answer to that was exercise. Exercise more. Exercise yeah. more. I yeah. took her out kayaking on the lake. She came back. <laughs> it was so rough out there. It was so hilarious. <laughs> She's paddling back. She told me the whole time she was praying, Lord, don't bring up a big storm. It was that windy, like the chop, like the, oh, the waves were getting bigger. Yeah. You can see like little white caps. I'm coming back in. Once I was heading back in and I could look at the stone and know that I was making progress, I wasn't too worried about mm-hmm. it. But I'm like, what if a wind shear drops right now, man? I mean, am I going to get, how big might these waves get? I'm so she yeah. was praying the whole way back. But you know what? When we were done, she didn't have a fever. So that's it. Work, work out, out more. more. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. But patience hey. when you listen to, I think is a big one. Love is patient. I think it takes patience. You're not going to agree with people. And patience with me would be this. If you're a patient listener, you're not filling in what they're about to say. This happens to me in my, in my relation. My wife would admit mm-hmm. readily admit to this. I'm saying something. She goes, yeah. And blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, that's not what I was going to say. Yeah. But hey, if that if you think sometimes I just quit talking because mm-hmm. I'm like, wow, I couldn't even get that sentence out of my mouth, yeah. and you're already filling it in. And she's not even a, you know, right? She's in, probably heard enough of my stuff. Let's be honest. She's probably heard enough. In my hospice training, uh, I'm a volunteer for hospice, and in that training, they they were talking about, and I wish I knew the exact uh, numbers, but it was over a hundred words a minute somebody can speak. Oh, yeah. But over 400 words a minute, somebody can hear. Right. And so what are you doing with the gap? Right. You know, you got to be actively trying to understand what the person's saying between the gaps of the 120 words that they're trying to say. Right. You know, and come back to interruptions. Interruptions is a sure tail sign that you're impatient. Right. You know, you're on edge. You want to get it out there. You want to get it out there. And it's like, just stop. It's not going to help. It's going to frustrate the other person. The other person is now going to be even louder. Right. right. And because we just want to be heard. Right. Yeah. And, well, I think that if you really care about somebody, too, and I think that's where it comes to love in it, like you got to be patient, but you have to be loving. And I really believe that one of the challenges being a mm-hmm. listener, it kind of shows you if you really love the other person more than yourself. And I, this is a big challenge. I mean, you and I talked about oh, this uh, yesterday when we went to do that trip and we were picking up apples with that tub that we're going to be baptizing people in at our uh, church picnic. And uh, you and I were discussing this very issue, yeah. at least I was. It's right. just like in the human heart, how much selfishness is there and how oh, much. And goodness. when you find yourself, you don't like if you're telling me a story and I don't really want to hear it or Eric or Adam or anybody, my wife, my kids, am I willing to hear them out? Like if my son, I don't always agree with him. We had a great talk, by the way, on the out on the river. We went kayaking uh, last weekend, and and man, I mean, one of the best talks we've had in ages. I really, I was listening, 
And I thought he was listening to me too. Good. And we were actually trying to come to understanding of what our world is going through, what what has led to some of the things our world is going through. We're not we're not there to prove a point. We're not there. And I think that right. that's one thing too that really diminishes listening is when you're not really worried about listening, you're just trying to prove your point or win an that's argument. Exactly right. You're trying to persuade somebody. Not all communication has to be persuasive. That's hard to know. Like as a pastor, I'm a I'm a trained motivator. Yeah. Motivator. Right. Every sermon's mm-hmm. supposed to be really persuasive. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm trying to persuade you to a certain belief about God or to a certain understanding, to a certain position. But in my normal day to day communications, I can't always be a preacher. Yep. Yep. Right? If you if you multiplied the conversation between you and your son over millions of people, this right. world would be a completely different place. You're man. right. I'm telling you, when you take time and, you know, and the good thing is, is you were doing it through an activity, which right. helps us open up, you know, right. when you're working and serving, especially serving together, man, those conversations just flow out of you, you know, you're, and, and you're able to comprehend, you're able to see each other's points. Yeah, you but know? We're, we're talking from a man's perspective because men are shoulder to shoulder. Yeah. We talk. Right. Shoulder yeah. to shoulder. Mm-hmm. Me and other people I've got even getting to know more lately, it's been shoulder to shoulder where for the our wives, they like face to face time. And okay, that's true. Yeah. Isn't it true? I it mean, is. I've read that. It I didn't true. come up with it. I mean, I've read that. I'm not like, I don't come up with a lot of the stuff I've learned. I had to learn, you know, I had to study and read about it. It's not that, it, you know, intuitively I knew that. Right. Because I would intuitively always be a shoulder to shoulder speaker because I'm a yeah. guy. Now, my wife loves shoulder-to-shoulder time. Like, she loves to be out there, too, and working shoulder-to-shoulder, and we'll talk about stuff. Mm-hmm. But I have to know she likes that face-to-face communication One as well. of the best uh, ways that we communicate, my wife and I, is driving down the road, driving in a car, right. driving in a vehicle. I don't know what happens. We open up to each other. You right. know what I mean? It's just kind of like we're able to talk, you know? And so you got to find that with whoever you're engaging with. you right. got to find that place where you can engage the best. You know, right. engage your ears and your mouth the best, right. you know. Well, I think it's when you're not doing a million other things. If you're going to have a serious mm-hmm. conversation, sometimes you need to sit down and have a serious conversation, not right. half paying attention to that and half shoveling stone or half. Like my son and I are out there kayaking. And I think, too, being interested in the topic. That it is like it I mean, does help listening. Helps, yeah. It does help listening when you're talking about things that are relevant to you, and, and maybe you need to realize that too when you're trying to tell a story. Make sure that story is actually relevant to the person you're talking yeah. to, and it would help them be a better listener as well. Right. But the love for people—that that's the challenge in my heart right now—is okay, God, and and just asking myself this: you know, how much do I really love people? Am I willing to be unselfish? Am I willing to right. listen? Right. And not just tell my view. But to hear them out, I think is absolutely vital. Titus uh, three two it says, "Speak evil of no one, avoid quarreling, and be gentle. Right. Show perfect courtesy toward all people. Right. Man, there you go. Come on, you know, like That's perfect courtesy perfect. to all people. Right. Absolutely. What's more courteous than saying, "Hey, I understand you're hurting right now. Tell right. me about it. Right. I want to hear you. I want to hear you out. I don't. I don't think. I don't think anything is. And I, I've had. I have to. A okay." Sometimes not only do you have to learn something, you have to relearn, or you have to remind yourself of what you've learned. Yeah. And right. a lot of, when it comes to these big debates in our world today, I just, sometimes I just sit down and I'm disappointed with myself that I had been so forceful in my conversations prior. And you kind of come back and you feel badly about it. You know what? I should have just shut up and listen. Mm-hmm. I shouldn't have taken offense because it's not an offense against me if someone doesn't agree with me about racial things going on in the world. Why should that offend me? Yep. I just have a view. They have a view. They have every right to a view, That's and right. they have to learn it. As I told my wife, we were talking about some of the young people, and I said, honey, they have every right to learn and figure this stuff out just like we did. Yeah. Sometimes we didn't learn stuff because people just told us what to think. We came to a position of what to think over time as we studied and we prayed and we grew, and we have to give other people that same patience and encouragement. So again, quick to listen. You got to be patient. That'll make you a good listener. Mm-hmm. You got to truly love the person who's right. talking to you. That, that'll that make you a good listener. And then we can ask, I mean, really, the other thing, we're not going to have time to hit it, but who are you listening to? I would just say, hey, watch your source. That's right. You know, who, That's exactly watch your source. Right. It, it can it can. Burn a hole in your mind, man, if you just constantly get the same source of negative talk over and over and over and over and over again. Right. Man, it's just like you have to stop listening so much to negativity and try right. to find the truth of God's word. Spend time in God's word trying to hear from God himself. Right. And then educate yourself there before you try to educate yourself anywhere else. Man. Right. And and I, I would agree 100%. Mm-hmm. You know, when it, when it comes to this, 
who are you listening to? Make sure that that's a quality source and they're really speaking the truth. I tend to believe none of what I hear and half of what I see. Mm -hmm. And that's how I've lived my life. <laughs> I tend not to, I need, to, I'm a, I, I might as well have been born, I believe it's Missouri is the show me state. That, that's how I've always felt about things. Just show me how it is. We appreciate you tuning in and listening to our Way to Go podcast. Have a great and fantastic week.